All right, everyone, today we are going to be talking about ecosystems. So you should have your ecosystem page up while you are watching this uh, video. And let's go ahead and talk about an ecosystem. So our objective is to determine how organisms are organized by their interactions. Things are interacting, okay, all the time. So uh, let's just go over a few things. Uh, what is the smallest unit of living things? We should remember that cells are the smallest unit of living things. You can have one little tiny cell or you can have many working together. All right. Uh, what does the prefix bio mean? Bio, biology means living. Okay. So bio means living. Um, list two living factors and two non-living factors of the ecosystem shown. So we know if something is living, for example, uh, that cute little squirrel there, squirrel, or the turtle, Myrtle the turtle, or that frog over there, Freddy the frog, okay, those are living things. Uh, also, that fantastic tree, okay, um, non-living, non-living, uh, I don't think that your rock is living unless you talk to it, maybe in your imagination, uh, but most likely it's not. Uh, that house over there that is not living, even though you live in it, it is not living itself. Okay. All right, let's get going. Ecology is the study of how living things interact with each other and their environment. So they are interacting with each other and the environment. Okay. Every living thing is made of cells. An ecosystem is made up of all the biotic and non live series, me, living biotic and non-living abiotic factors. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. Bio, remember, means living, the prefix there. So if things are biotic, that means that they are living. So in this picture, we're going to circle, okay, all of the living things. So that deer right there, living. That bird up there, living. That little fishy swim down in that stream, living. That little tiny insect buzzing around, living as well. That plant right there, it has cells, it is living. And that beautiful tree, living. Okay? Those are biotic elements. Okay? Abiotic means that they are not living. Okay? They are not made of cells. All right, so some of the things that are not made of cells that we want to think about are the sun. The sun is not made of a cell, okay? Those clouds, they are made of H2O and a few other elements, okay? So they are not living. Molecules are not a living thing. Wind, wind is not living unless you're like watching Frozen. I mean, Frozen 2, Gail, she's living. But our, our wind is not. Uh, those rocks down there, again, your pet rock, maybe, but these most likely, every rock, no. Uh, the water, again, water is made of a molecule, H2O, so it is not living, okay? All right, so biotic means anything that is living, it has cells. Abiotic is something that is non-living. All right, so all of science builds upon levels, okay? Every living organism is made up of cells, tiny living units that can live alone, remember, which are called unicellular, or combined to make more complex things like tissues, organs, organ systems, organisms, multicellular, hence, the levels of organization, okay? You start off with atoms. They are not living. Molecules are not living as well, but they do start everything. All matter is made up of atoms. Molecules, okay, uh, bring together to make organelles. Remember, organelles are those tiny little things that are inside of the cell that help it function to create proteins and things like that. Cells, organelles are inside cells. Um, cells make tissues. 
not the tissues you blow your nose with. Uh, tissues make organs, okay? Heart, lungs, brain, which then together make organ systems. You have your digestive system with your intestine, stomach, esophagus. Organ systems all together make organisms like us. We have a digestive system, we have a cardiovascular system, we have a lymphatic system, we have a skeletal system. All of those together make an organism. Organisms then together make populations. Populations turn into communities. Communities turn into ecosystems and ecosystems turn into biospheres. We will talk about all of these populations, communities, ecosystems, and biosphere in just a minute. Okay, so organisms are organized into levels by how they interact with one another, okay? We have several types of organisms and their type tells us how organisms interact. So let's look at this a little bit more. Now create your own levels of organization for the frog. I'm gonna help you do this. So the first one, we are going to do a cardiac muscle. So find a cardio muscle cell. That muscle cell with other muscle cells makes muscle tissue. It gets a little bit more complex, okay? All that muscle tissue together makes a heart. The heart connected with veins and arteries makes the cardiovascular system which all of the systems together create that frog the organism all right so let's talk about organism organism is a single living thing that obtains food water and shelter to live grow and reproduce in its habitat or its environment. An organism's niche is its total way of life. So an organism is something that needs food, water, shelter, it lives, grows, reproduces in its habitat, okay? Each organism has its own unique thing that contributes to the environment, whether it's if it's what it eats, um, what it contributes to the environment, what it does, its role, that's a niche, okay? So a frog's niche might be it eats a lot of bugs, okay? So that habitat, in order for it to not have so many bugs, that's the frog's job. So one organism is a single living thing. That frog is one single living thing. That's why we call it an organism. If we go the next level of organization, okay? We are talking about a population. A population is a group of interbreeding organisms or species living in the same area. For example, okay, all of the frogs living in a pond behind your neighborhood. They are all the same species, okay? So this frog is the same as that frog is the same as that frog. They all live in the same area Okay, and they all can breed with each other. This is one population of frogs. If you had a different species, okay, that's a different population, okay? So population is interbreeding organisms of the same species in the same area. When we go up a level, you have a community all the populations in an ecosystem. For example, all the frogs, insects, reptiles, birds, plants, mushrooms, bacteria, protists, mammals, and living fish living in a pond. Everything that is living is a community, but each is its own population. So we just saw the frogs, okay? But there's one species of, say, mosquitoes that lives in that area, and that is a population. And then maybe there's one species of birds that live in that population and in that community, and that's a population. And maybe there's one specific plant that only grows in that area, and that is a population. So each 
different species and living thing is its own population. But put together, all the living things make a community in one area. If we go up another level, we're going to talk about an ecosystem or a biome. This includes all of the living, remember biotic, and non-living abiotic features of the environment. Okay, There are several major types of ecosystems such as the rainforest, desert, tundra, deciduous forest, taiga, marine, and much more. So this means it has all of the living things just like your community did. The frogs, the insects, the birds, the plants, the mushroom, the bacteria, everything that was living, including the non-living or abiotic factors, clouds, dirt, soil, water, sunlight, man-made materials, that bench that someone put over there, okay? Those are all non-living and included with the living that is called an ecosystem, okay? So for example, if you are in the ocean, okay, you have the deep ocean, you have the open ocean, you have uh, whales and sharks, and all the way at the bottom, you have the sea floor, the sand, that is part of the ecosystem. So you have the living and non-living. Okay. On top of all of that is the biosphere, which is every place on earth that can support life. And life can be supported in places where you would not think at the very, very depths of the ocean, at the very deepest part of the ocean, there is life. In the very hottest places on earth, there is life. Okay, in the very coldest places on earth, there is life. Okay, wherever can support life is a biosphere. There are several parts to the biosphere. We have our atmosphere, which is the air. We have the lithosphere, which is land. And we have the hydrosphere, which is water. So all three of those make up your biosphere. So that's about it, guys. Um, there are two videos on here, which are great for you guys to watch. Okay. So go ahead and watch those on your own. So what you guys are going to do now is on this page, okay, you're going to add in um, animals that would be within a population. Now remember, a population is one species of interbreeding. They are the same species, they are the same organism, okay? And then you get to community, and the community includes that population, as well as all the other living populations in that area. So you have frogs, you have the bugs, you have the plants, you have the algae from the lake, you have the fish in the lake, okay? And then when you get to ecosystem, you're adding those non-living abiotic factors in, such as sun. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is there a lot of wind? Is there water? Okay, that's what ecosystem is. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about ecosystem, and we'll see you later.